Today I'll be tying Clark's Big Mayfly. This happens to be a green draked version. I recently highlighted this fly in a yellow version in my Throwback Thursday fly on my Riverkeeper fly website. And I'll have a link to that below. But I decided to tie it in an olive color to imitate the green drakes that are out or were out on the Metolius River, which is my home waters. I will put a hook in the vise. We'll crimp down the barb. This is a Daiichi 1280 size 10. And my thread today, I like to use Danville. This is a six aught in an olive. I'll start right behind the eye of the hook and make touching turns all the way down to the barb. The body of this fly uses some mylar and I want to keep the body flat which will end up helping me create that body. This is some size 14 Danville Mylar. It's gold on one side and silver on the other. So I'll tie it with a soft loop with the gold side down and then the silver side up. With just leaving a, sh a short tag, I'll continue my flat body with touching turns of thread on the way up. And we'll go to about the one third mark. I'll use some Zappa Gap. This adds to the stability of the fly. Just put a couple of small daub, daubs on it. You don't have to do this. And as I fold that over, the gold will now be on top. So I will make touching turns on the way up, trying to keep a flat body. Keeping tension. This is the same body that Lee developed in his Clark's Stone and Lady Stone flies. Lee was an artist and uh, this, is, this offers a, an impressionistic view of the body. The sparkle might attract the fish a little bit, I don't know exactly, but it seems to be really effective. The, Yarn I'm using is some Clark's Tyne yarn. It's a poly yarn. This is olive golden. It comes like this. And so I've got the end of it. And I've got a ruler that I'm gonna measure three and a half inches. And that's about the spot that I want, or the amount of material that I have found works good for a, for a size 10. And you'll notice that I'll use three, three segments of this. And I found that that's about right for, for a size 10 hook. Now I found that if I tie these in in different areas, it will help so I don't create a real bulky body. So I'll take a soft wrap, capture that, and then move towards the eye, come back a little bit. And this is a looped section, so I'm just going to cut that. And I will hold that with a, and capture it with a soft wrap, and then wrap forward to try to bind down all the ends. And if you do that, a lot of times you don't have to go back and use your scissors to trim 
the butt ends. That will save you a little bit of time. And I'm just going back to about the one third point and we'll create the body now. I will take the poly yarn and hold all three segments and then just start twisting. And if you just twist one direction, I'm twisting away from me. Keep twisting just so it's really tight. And it will eventually start to, to twist over on itself and that's what you want. I'll pull this section forward and measure with my left hand the length of the body that I want. And I'll hold the, the hook and the poly with my hand and then let go. And you'll notice that that twists and that's fine. If it's not long enough, don't worry, just let it go and you can start over. It's very easy. When I first tied these, I thought, oh, I'm going to mess up with the first one, which I did. And the body was too short. And rather than go back and change it, I just tied it. So that's the way to not worry about it. Again, we'll measure. So I wanted a little bit longer, maybe a hook gap past the end of the hook. Hold on to the poly and the hook and let go. And then you can twist it help it a little bit. And that's going to be your body. I'll hold on tightly with the, um, with the poly and the, the hook. Let it unravel a little bit. That will help to uh, s secure this to the top of the hook. And I found 10 or 12 wraps works pretty well to secure it. I'll pull it back. This is going to now be our post so I want that to continue to sit, sit straight up. Flatten my thread. I'm going counterclockwise because every time I take a wrap, it puts a twist in it. I'll post this and I'll start going around. And I want, I'm trying to get touching turns on the way up. And I found that if I turn it sideways, it's much easier for me to see that I'm using touching turns. But you can see that. And I'll probably go up 12 or 15 wraps of touching turns to create the parachute post. There I am at the top and I'll just come straight down, make a loop and repeat that process. And this is just creating a thick post I'll come up, go on the other side now, and do that one more time. It's not quite as important to do as many touching turns uh, on, on the second and third. And I come back and I want my thread right in front of the post. For the hackle, I happen to be using two versions of Bard Dunn. I, these are some Charlie Hall, Collins hackle. And I just really like the, the variation of this. And you don't need to use two different versions. Just if you've got an olive or a, a just a plain Dunn, you don't need to have a Bard Dunn, but I just like the looks of it. So I have two selected already that, I've, that they're prepped. And I want, the way I tie it, I want the, the curved uh, side in and I will tie it directly in front of the, of the post. Just trying to capture the end of it. And I use five wraps Then I'll turn, I'll do the next one exactly the same. And with those sticking straight up then, 
go up that twist a little bit. So let me redo that. Not have as much thread sticking out. <clears throat> so if you don't like it, just remove it and tie it in again. So they're both going, the contours are exactly the same now. And I will take my thread then and go up the post. And clear to the top and then back down. And go to the, the spot behind the eye. I'll just be using some super fine dubbing, this caddis green. I use a lot of super fine dubbing for my dry flies. Add a little bit at a time so you can easily dub that. Just pinch and squeeze in one direction. Doesn't have to be super thick. Pull this out of the way. We got a little strand there. And I will start wrapping right behind the eye of the hook. And with touching turns, just to make an even thorax area, I'll go up, go behind the post, and make a figure eight wrap around the post, and end up on the back end of the post. And this is where that'll be help me with my tie tie off point. I'll take my hackle and just pull it down now and then wrap. I'll hold on to the post as I can and as I turn as I change hands and wrap down. So I have the first wrap on top, the next wrap below it and we'll go below that and below that and you can exaggerate a little bit and I'll end up with five or six wraps because so I can go one more here and I've got it held with my left hand so I can take my thread now and we'll just wrap around the parachute there's one wrap and try not to trap any of those barbules down. And there's four wraps. Some people just use the Zapadap super glue and make a couple more wraps and don't even tie it off. Um, but I've chosen not, not to do that. I just bring it forward, pull everything back and make a wrap around the eye, finish it with a little bit of a head. The downside of that, you will see one little thread wrap there, but I have caught fish with flies tied exactly like this, and I don't think that the fish really care. We'll now make a five turn whip finish, pull it out of the way. Tighten it. Trim it. And now I will take my scissors and trim the hackle. And I do that just by grabbing the hackle, opening up my scissors, and then just pushing and pulling the hackle at the same time. And that will trim it very tight. The last part is to uh, make the post a little bit shorter, just trim, trim to length, and I usually pull that towards me, and it's about the body length, somewhere in there. It's not critical. And then I'll take my scissors and fluff out the post. So that is the Clark's Big Mayfly. It happens to be in a green drake color. As I mentioned earlier, I'll have a pattern sheet linked in the bottom or in the d description down below. And I'll also include a link to uh, the Clark stone so you can see how he's used 
poly in order to create the wing with that as well. And I've got a YouTube video showing how that fly is tied. If you've liked this, I hope you subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the like button down below.